hear from me? I want to talk to you today about the call to carry. The call to carry. You know, we talked about last week, there's two ways to look at Scripture. As uh, you can turn to Luke chapter 10. We talked, uh, when there's a very familiar passage of Scripture, like the uh, Good Samaritan. There's two ways. Like, it's so easy to get over familiar with these Scriptures. Uh, it's really easy to, like, see the Scripture and think we've learned everything there is to learn from it. And so there's two ways to kind of, we want to defamiliarize ourselves so we can get what Jesus is trying to teach us through the Scripture by His Spirit. And one way is to take a step back. If you remember, last week we took a step back and we looked at the story in light of the big picture of what was happening around there. And I believe the Lord showed us some things that we might have missed in the past. Amen? Somebody got something out of last week. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, I worked a long time on it. I really like to know it's not in vain, even if you're just humoring me. I'm down for that. I just, I can use the encouragement. I'm okay with that. Uh, the other way is to look closer. So we can step back. And last week we talked about how Jesus was working his way to Jerusalem. He sent his, sending his disciples where he was planning to go, and they were uh, preparing a, a place for him. We said the other way is you can study the words, the phrases, or specific verses to try to get a fresh view on it. That's kind of what we plan to do today. We're going to zoom in. Before we get there, uh, has anybody seen this before? It's the little coronavirus, right? That's, that's, that's this, it's this little piece of genetic material that jumped from a bat to a person in China, right? In Wuhan, China. Someone ate some bat soup, and they got a virus, and this, we're talking about December. And here we are in March, shutting down the United States, and here, here um, we like to be solo. We like to be individuals. We like to be an island unto ourselves. We like to think that nobody's influencing me, and I am the master of my own world. And this little piece of genetic material shows how interconnected we all are. This is how interconnected we are. Literally, somebody on the backside of China got sick three months ago, and now the United States is in pandemonium. This is how interconnected we are. Now, hear me. That doesn't bother me. That's the way it's always supposed to be. We're supposed to be connected to other people, whether we acknowledge it or not. We are. Nobody's an island in itself. Even as today there is this great move where people want to be off-grid, they want to be self-sustaining, uh, but they're not forging their own metal. They're, they're not creating their own nails. They're not building their own solar panels. We're all relying on one another in one way, shape, or form. We're connected. We're all interconnected. And, and this is the way it was always supposed to be. And so if we are all interconnected and we want to be a people who don't just sleepwalk through life, we don't want to be a people who just live to pay bills, we don't want to live to be a people who are just living for one day to have a tombstone over my grave. We want to live on purpose. We have to ask the question, what is my role in this world? If we're all interconnected, then we all have a part to play. We all have a piece of the puzzle that's within us. And whether we like it or not, what we do affects everyone around us. What we do affects our children and our children's children. It affects our neighbor. It affects our city. One bat soup has affected the world. Crazy to think of that, isn't it? Come on, let's be honest. That's crazy, isn't it? One wacky meal in a global economy is crashing because we're connected. We're responsible for one another. It's not just me, myself, and I. We are in this together. We're all on the same planet. People can draw little lines on the globe and say, that's you and this is us, and try to build a little wall to separate us, but we're all on this little ball circling the sun together. And what we do affects everyone around us. And of course, Jesus knew that. Jesus was not surprised by this. Uh, and he, and he, he tells his disciples in Luke chapter 10, verse 3, he says, Go, behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money belt, no bags, no shoes, and greet no one on the way. Whatever house you enter first, say, peace be to this house. And if a man's peace is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Here's what's crazy about this. Jesus has a plan to change the world. He has an amazing, amazing master plan. And like we sang in worship today, he is for you. 
He has good plans, and he wants to come to pass, and he wants us all to know him, and he wants us to live in his peace. And he said, man, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down out of heaven. I'm going to put on flesh. I'm going to carry the weight of the, the sin of the world. And the disciples are like, all right, how are we taking over? How are we going to bring in this new com- kingdom? And Jesus is like, here's what you're going to do. You ready? Here's what we're going to do. Here's, here's the plot. You ready? Here's the plan. You're going to go tell people. And he's like, all right, well, then, then what? Do we get a sword? Do we get a gun? Do we get an army? He's like, no, no, I already told you the plan. Okay, yeah, no, no. We tell people, then we go kill them, right? No, 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 no. You just tell people. I don't, I don't get it. Like, we're not that connected. Actually, we are. We are that connected. We are that intertwined in life. Jesus said that we are supposed to go and spread his kingdom through this interconnectedness instead of through force. It's not supposed to be the way man says the kingdom is supposed to work. We're supposed to use it just through interconnectedness, just by telling people. Now, me personally, it's important that in this time of what they call social distancing, right, which is a good practice in this time, we can't let social distancing become emotional distancing. We can't allow it to be spiritual distancing. We have to stay connected because we're connected whether we like it or not. And if we don't do connectedness on purpose, then we start to do it ugly. Now, I stopped shaking hands with people last week. I stopped hugging people, and people were kind of mocking me, and they're like, oh, what? Oh, it's not that big a deal. You're overblown. I'm not worried about getting sick. I'm not not worried about getting sick either. I'm I'm a relatively young guy, right? Many in here are younger than me. You're better off than I am, but I'm not worried about me. I'm not worried about getting the flu. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want it. I'd like to not get it. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I'm not tempting God, you know, like, but I, 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 I touch more people than me. This isn't all about me. What, what if I'm a carrier and I don't even know it? What if I've already been, infected? what if we've been infected and we don't even know we're just carrying this thing? I stop hugging people, not for me, but for you. I think about things bigger. I, I can't just think about myself. I'm not on this planet alone. What, what about my mother-in-law who's elderly? What about my mom who's elderly? What about my neighbors? I, I stopped purposefully touching people so that the people around me can be safe. I'm not concerned about me. I'm a Christian. I'm concerned about the people around me because I know that I'm interconnected. Yeah. And what I let in my life affects other people. Yeah. So I want to guard what happens right here, not just for me, but to protect the people around me. I want to live a better life, not just so I can be happy, but so that my kids can have a better life. I want to guard myself with holiness. I want to guard myself from lust and pornography. I want to guard myself from uncleanness, not just so I can be happier, which I will be, but so that my marriage is better, so my family is better, so my spiritual children can have a better future. It's not just about me. I'm connected to other people. Amen. I'm not concerned about what happens to me, but... We know this spiritual truth. What's on your life gets on other people. What's on our lives gets on other people. And we celebrate that in this house. We, that, is, that is one of our values. Like, what's on me, you can have. Whatever God has done in my life, he'll do in your life. If the gift of prophecy resides on me, man, when that spirit of prophecy is moving, you just get in there and you get the same spirit of prophecy on your life. If you want to learn how to heal the sick, just get around some of us who are healing the sick, and you'll see the gift of healing begin to manifest in your life. This is just how it works, the, the blessings of God, the learning how to be generous, the learning how to walk in God's generosity. We just walk around it, and it gets on our life, but it goes both ways. It corrupts good morals, right? Is that the, the saying goes? And what's on my life gets on the lives of people around me, and if it happens to be coronavirus... You can say, I bind it in the name of Jesus, but you've already been contagious for three days, right? So let's start living our lives in a way that we know what gets on me will get on you, so I am going to guard what happens in this little area of influence. Amen. Amen. This is how we want to live. Here's the thing. What we have found out that coronavirus is not the only contagious thing that's going around right now, right? Like, I mean... They said with the normal flu, on average, 
the average person who gets the flu gives it to one other person. Now, that means that one person gives it to three and two other people don't give it to anyone, right? Like, so it's an average for everyone who gets it, someone else gets it. They say, on average, whoever gets the coronavirus, you give it to 10 people. It's, it, it spreads rapidly, right? It, but that's not the only thing that's spreading rapidly right now. Fear is spreading rapidly right now, like a contagion. Hysteria is spreading rapidly right now. Panic. Panic is, I go to Publix. Now, I don't know what this fetish with toilet paper is in this season. I don't. I don't know what's happening. Of all things to hoard, why toilet paper? If you need 140 rolls of toilet paper, like, you should be at the doctor already. <laughs> don't wait for coronavirus. Like, you can't drink that much water. Like, you need help, right? Like, we need to stop up the presses here for some reason. There's things going wrong. <laughs> Selfishness is spreading like a virus right now. Anxiety. Anxiety is exploding. Now, did you, did you read about the guy who collected the 4,000 hand sanitizers? He drove all around his neighborhood within like nine miles, 10 miles, and cleared out every store of hand sanitizer so he could make money? What happens if nobody in your neighborhood has hand sanitizer? Have you even thought how that affects you? I mean, what happens... If the people who work at Publix can't go because they can't get their hands clean, and so your grocery store shuts down. What happens if your city dies of coronavirus, but you're sitting on a mountain of cash? You're going to be the richest guy in a dead city. Like, we have to quit thinking of just ourselves and making a quick buck in this thing, and we got to figure out, hey, we're in this together. Imagine what our society is going to be like if 80% of the people don't have toilet paper. Think you don't want to touch doorknobs now. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, we're in this together. We're in this together. The truth is we've always been in this together. But we have not recognized it, and we've allowed fear and panic and selfishness and anxiety to crowd out what we know about the gospel, like God is our supply. We can rest in him. Not only can we personally, we're supposed to carry this to other people. Mark 13, Jesus said that false messiahs, false prophets will rise and they'll show signs and wonders and they will watch this lead others astray. What does this look like to lead others astray? To tell them to fear, tell them to panic, Tell them to be anxious. It's time to get selfish. It's time to isolate yourself. I mean, the preppers are having an amazing time right now, you know, in their own joy. But we're actually interconnected here. In this whole, you can't trust other people is a false prophecy. That you got to hunker down in your house with a shotgun and a year's worth of food is a false prophecy from false prophets. Imagine you do that and you get on the other side and what are you going to tell Jesus? Hey, I let everybody die before me. Jesus, that's funny. I did the exact opposite. That's funny. Thought you were a follower. Now, I don't want to die and I don't want to be beaten to death and I don't want to be nailed to a cross and I don't want the coronavirus. But at the same point, I don't want to be hateful, fearful, or selfish either. There's a far worse contagion than physical sickness and that's spiritual sickness. And we don't want this soulish sickness to cause a spiritual sickness in our town where we're more worried about ourselves and other people. This is actually what we want to have happen. We want this other contagion to happen. We actually want to be people who spread trust. We want to spread love. We want to spread hope. We want generosity to multiply. We want to serve other people in an amazing way. We want to give people Peace, just peace, that's, that's, that's what we want to give. When we serve other people, we are investing into the future. 
my, my wife was um, at a salon this week, and you remember like early in the week, it was just something off in the distance, and then by Friday, people were murdering one another to steal their hand sanitizer and toilet paper, you know? It, it got crazy fast, right? Like on Tuesday, Wednesday, they're like, no, I'm not going to close the schools, man. Kids eat there. And by Friday, they're like, they're all going to die. We're closing the schools so you can bury your kids, you know? Like, whoa, that escalated quickly. Like, what just happened? And the truth is many things that are closed today are closed out of fear, not out of, out of pragmatism. And this is Carl, who is not a public health official. So you can totally ignore my next sentence. This is going to get serious in a couple weeks. That's when we need people to stay home. People are going to have isolation fatigue by then and going out when they should be in. Because we're not letting logic rule the day. We're letting fear rule the day. Again, if you stayed home, man, I, this is no judgment. Like nobody here is more spiritual or faithful than anybody who stayed home. That's, that's not what we're saying, but there is wisdom. And this is what we need to be actually working to spread. My wife was in a salon, like I said, and, and there was a woman next to her who was so scared. She, her hands were shaking. She couldn't keep them still. And then she went to Publix, and she was talking to a woman. And of course, I don't know if you've been to Publix, uh, but you might think it's like a gladiator ring in there as we're fighting for supplies for the apocalypse. And so my wife was talking to a woman, and a woman, she, her daughter uh, was away at college, and of course, they've closed the, closed the colleges. She'd come home for spring break, and uh, you know, you move away to college, and you take your stuff with you, because that's what happens when you move, right? And when you come back home, you don't bring all your stuff, because you plan on going back. And then the school says, hey, by the way, don't come back. And her daughter's like, like my stuff, you know, there's a nice outfit, but I'd like the rest of my clothes, because if it's closed through the, through the uh, fall, or excuse me, the spring semester here, they'll be closed through the summer. And so her daughter says, you know, I want to go back and get my stuff. And so she's going to get on a plane to go get her stuff. And the, the woman it was talking to my wife. This is a woman who told this entire story in Publix to my wife, right? Who she didn't know. This is how fearful people are. And so the woman starts crying in Publix out of fear for her daughter. That fear is real. The concern is real. I don't, I don't belittle anybody who's fearful in this time for their loved ones. Of course you're supposed to be concerned about your loved ones. If you're not concerned about your loved ones, it's time to wake up, right? Like, we should always be concerned about our loved ones. And so she's worried about her daughter, and my wife just is like, come on, can I just pray for you right now? We have this hope in Jesus Christ. We don't have to live in fear. We can actually make good decisions, and we can pray for your daughter. And so she grabs this woman's hands, and they begin to pray right in public. That was bold to touch someone. So, oh, you didn't touch her. No, oh, okay, that's good too. And so they begin to pray. They begin to pray right there in, in Publix, and as they're praying and this woman's being affected spiritually, another woman stops and says, hey, can you pray for me too? I mean, and she just began to gather people in Publix who need this hope that we have in Jesus Christ. My wife didn't go into Publix to, to, to do an evangelistic crusade. She's just living life, spreading peace. This is what we're called to do. This is what we're called to do. Yesterday, my family, or my wife and I, we just walked our neighborhood, and of course, we were praying over our neighborhood, but probably just as important, we knocked on doors. And we have elderly people in our neighborhood, and we just said, hey, I just want to let you know, we, I'm Carl, Tracy, and we live right over here. Ah, we know where you live. Yeah, yeah, Carl, Tracy. Um, listen, if you need something from the store and you don't want to go out, just let us know because we're going to the store. Like, elderly people are not supposed to go in public places. And why should they have to? Why should your 80-year-old neighbor have to go to Publix in this time when you're not working anyways? Like, this is, what it, this is what the gospel actually looks like, feet on the ground, in real life. It's not some super spiritual, I need God to send me to Tanzania. No, no, no. I need to go two houses down to the elderly lady who doesn't know anybody else in the neighborhood cares about her enough to go pick up some eggs and a loaf of bread, right? Like, this is, what the, this is where the gospel starts. So we just started knocking on doors of every person where I'm just like, listen, I don't want to be insulting, but, you know trying to talk to the older people in our neighborhood. Just let them know we're here. You know, if you need something, you need some supplies, you need some food, or if you're just scared, we're right over here. And, and if you're in here today and you're in that place, let us know. There's no reason to be isolated. We are called to carry peace to the people around us. And this is not, this is not some sort of passive thing. We actually are supposed to be doing this on purpose. We're actually supposed to be gaining the peace of God and sharing it on purpose. This is, this is a super deep word, right? I mean, like, whoa, wheels within wheels type of stuff, right? Like, let's just actually go out there and be the church. In this time of chaos, the world is going crazy, and we could just be the church. Now, we want to pray for the harvest, but we also want to do the work 
right? And so we see in this scripture in Luke chapter 10, Jesus is sending out the 72. He didn't say go out and be super spiritual. He said, go talk to people. Tell them about this kingdom. This is my big, massive plan of world conversion. You just go tell people. And while you're telling them, be generous of spirit. Don't take anything with you. You don't need natural stuff. Go. But, but, you know, if you see a sick person, be generous and give away healing. If you see someone discouraged, go ahead and encourage them. If you think someone is under the boot of oppression from Rome, let them know there's a new kingdom here. It's a kingdom of peace. Just, just give it away. And so Jesus tells, like, hey, I'm praying for these people who are going to work in the harvest. And he says here in Luke chapter 10, verse 3, a really crazy scripture. He goes, behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. He's basically saying, remember, remember Daniel was in the lion's den? Well, you're going to be like that, except I'm going to strap bacon to you, right? Like I'm putting, you, I'm putting bacon around you in the lion's den, right? Like I am going to make you lunch. You're going to look like lunch to the people around you. Let me, let me word this another way. I'm going to send you into the world, and what you have is going to be attractive. People are going to desire what's on your life. It's going to be different than what they have. You're not going to go out there with a gun, with, 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 with a machete. You're actually going to go out there like a lamb in the midst of people who only know violence. And while the violent are there stomping one another in public, you're actually going to be in peace and just get what you need. You are going to be like a lamb in the midst of the wolves, and this peace that I put in you is going to begin to take over the world. You see, as Christians, we know that the Lord is our defender. We don't have to rise up in violence against other people. We don't have to get in this selfish, me-against-the-world mindset. The Lord, our God, is our shield. And if you've been dealing with anxiety, i got a quick couple scriptures I want to speak over you. You can jot down the references and speak them over you this week. Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be anxious. Look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Romans 8.31, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Psalm 27.1, the Lord is the light in my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense in my life. Whom shall I fear? dread. Come on, Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, says the Lord, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Say amen to the Word of God. Come on. Come on. That's the truth of God's Word for you today. Don't surrender that to something else that people want to spread to you. We hold on to what God has said to us, because that is the truth. And so Jesus says this, listen, I'm sending you out in chaos as peace. Luke 10, 5, he says, wherever you go, say, peace be to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Now, in between these two passages, Jesus says, look, don't bring money. and don't." Now, all the people whose jobs are in flux right now because of this, you're like, I can do that. I can go out without money because that's what's happening right now because of this economy, right? Like, I got that one fulfilled. But Jesus says here, listen, whatever house you enter... Say, peace be to this house. Listen, we are supposed to carry this peace. The world is looking for the person of peace. The Lord is looking for the house of peace. And we were walking around our neighborhood letting, letting our neighbors know, hey, listen, there's a house of peace in this neighborhood. We're going to be all right. See, the Lord has sent somebody into this very neighborhood to declare peace. We don't need to worry. We have people here. We're not in this alone. We are going to get through it together. Amen. Amen. Come on. And that's your role as well. What does that look like? Like, what does that look like? Boots on the ground. How do, how do we how do we be this person of peace? How do we have the house of peace in our neighborhood? I'm, I want to give you some like just literal things we can do to be the church of Jesus Christ in this season. Look, I'm going to say it again. Don't hoard toilet paper <laughs> or hand sanitizer. Stop, stop. Other people need it. Like, can you imagine? 
you get to the hospital and they don't have people there because they have the flu because they couldn't find hand sanitizer. And you're sitting on 50 at home. Like, like let's, let's just use our brains for a minute. Right? Check on your neighbors. Knock on doors. Say hi to people. Let them know, hey, listen, if you got a struggle, let me know, man. I got, I got some food or I don't have food, but if I get some, I'll let you know where they have some food. Right? Like, we, we, we are interconnected. Let's, let's, let's be the church and let folks know, hey, I'm, we're praying over here. Let us know if you have prayer needs. Let us know if someone gets sick. Hey, look, call mom. Call mom, make sure mom's okay, right? Call your grandparents, pick up the phone, make sure your elderly family members know that you're, you're praying for them, that they're going to get better, that things are going to turn around. Like, call people, right? Call them, check on them, make sure they're in a safe place. Uh, make sure the elderly aren't fending for themselves. Call the single people in your life. Like, if you're married and you have kids, you forget, like, you know, like, you have a spouse coming home to you. They might be on their own. More than likely, they have an entire friend group, and they don't have to pay for anybody else, and you do, right? But so, but, <clears throat> but, you know, it's also a good chance that you know some single people who may not have kids, and you're where your kids go has just been shut down and they could use a couple extra bucks and they could watch your kids while you're gone. Like, we need to be interconnected here, right? We, we need to, yeah, and, they're, and, and, and all the single people said, see, yeah, yeah, they're with us here. You don't have to clap for them. They're, they'll say it for you. And you know what? As things are closing down, they don't mind eating meals with people. You can invite them over. Amen. Amen. Check on the single parents that you know. Right? With schools closing, um, and if you're a single parent, I don't have to explain this to you, but if you're not, like with schools closing, imagine that's how your kids get taken care of during the day while you're providing for the family. Now you're living paycheck to paycheck, and you've got to figure out what to do with your kids, and your job may be in jeopardy, and you don't have child. Like, let's, I, I'm not saying you have to be child care, but it's not all or nothing. Right? Call people who you know are vulnerable to what's happening right now. In this gig economy, people's jobs are tenuous, and we're in, a, we're in kind of a risky place right now for a lot of people, and we need to make sure that we're getting through this together. Amen? Amen? Amen. Come on, I need participation here. I don't care if you, you know, I need participation. This is who we have to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is important to us. <clears throat> Jesus called us his ambassadors. The apostles were literally, literally people who were sent to establish a culture that they came from, which was the culture of the kingdom, right? And in the Gospels, or excuse me, in the Bible, we are called ambassadors of reconciliation. We are God's ambassadors to the world. Let me, let me, let me phrase that another way for you. We are God's first impressions team. This is who we are to the world. Now, we have a first impressions team here, and they're supposed to be friendly, and they're supposed to greet people, hey, we're happy that you're here, right? You're not God's first impression team if you're letting him know, hey, just by the way, I want you to know there are loving God sent coronavirus to kill you because he hates you, right? Like this is, this is not God's message to the world. You're getting it wrong, right? You're reading the wrong parts of the book. You've met the wrong God, right? He's actually, he's not sending coronavirus to us because he's mad at San Francisco or New Orleans or wherever else in the world you may think that he's fixated on, Right? Like, we are his first impressions team. And as we go into the world and we tell people, hey, God, God we, we're praying together, we're believing, we're going to get through this thing together, then we're telling people who Jesus Christ really is. The people with the most hope have the most influence today. The people with the most hope will have the most influence. And I'm just trying to talk to people and let them know, hey, I'm not some crazy Christian with my head in the sand thinking, you know, I'm going to pray it away. Like, but I do pray, and I am being smart. I've seen God heal cancer, and I've seen him heal amazing things. I've also seen people who love Jesus get sick, so I'm not testing the Lord. But at the same point, I want to let you know God is for you. And Jesus also told us to go and make disciples. And this is a, this is a huge, huge call in our lives to get people connected to God through a first impression and then through follow-up. And let me, let, me, let me break that down for you. We're God's connections ministry. We are his connections team. We are the people that let people know how to follow God. And so we tell people, hey, listen, Man, I know it's crazy out there, but God has promised us that, you know, he didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, sound mind. Like, we could pray together. We, could, we don't have to 
be crazy because the world is going crazy. We get to connect them to God and his peace, and we're called to carry peace. If you get nothing else today, get peace. Don't allow the false prophets to make you fearful. Jesus said, if anyone wants to come after me, pick up your cross daily and follow me. Bam. It's right there in the Bible. What does that mean? What does it mean? I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I'm not walking around with a gun in my mouth, right? He's, I don't, I, what does that mean? We lay down what's always best for us for what's best for the kingdom. We don't just look at what's going to work out for me. We try to live for something bigger than us, for someone bigger than us. I pick up my cross to say, it's not my will, but your will be done, Jesus. Let me tell you, what this world needs more than anything else today is the peace that we have in Jesus Christ. This world needs the peace that we have in Jesus. So we're all going to pray. If you would stand with me, we are going to we're going to pray. We're going to very briefly pray for our city, for our church. We're going to pray. Not there yet. Oh, just go back one if you would, please. This world needs the peace that we have in Jesus. And I just want to give an opportunity at this moment. I would be negligent in my call as a spiritual leader to give, not to give you an opportunity to sign up for this peace. Amen. And so with every head bowed and every eye closed, I, I, want, to, I want to pray with you. I want to, I want to pray for those who are disconnected from God, who those who need this assurance of peace in Jesus Christ. So with nobody looking around, this is just between me and you. If you're saying today, Pastor, maybe I'm, I'm away from God, I'm disconnected from God, or I just need an assurance. If this thing comes my way, that I'm going to be with God forever in eternity. I want to pray with you. So nobody looking around, just put your hand up and down. I want to know who I'm praying with. I see you. Who else? Yep, 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 uh, yep, yep. I see on the left and on the right. Yeah, you can put your hand down. Thank you. I see you. Yeah. Anybody else want to just get on this before I close it out? If you are watching online today, you can do it right there where you're at. And with nobody looking around also, if you're saying, you know what, I just want to be a little more brave in this season, and I want to be the church. I want to be the church. If you just put your hand up right now, that's me. Yep, yep, yep. All over the room, you can put your hand down. Thank you. Pray this prayer together. We're going to pray both prayers together at the same time time. So just repeat after me. We're just going to ask Jesus to forgive us, come in and give us power. Just say, Jesus, would you forgive us for following ourselves and not following you? I declare today that you're the God, that I follow you, you're my Savior, and I'm the redeemed. Wash me clean. Give me a fresh start. Come on, give me a fresh start. Fill me with your spirit and give me power to be a witness of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just clap off for that real quick. Now, here's what we're going to pray very, very quickly. We're going to pray this. We're going to pray, I'm going to pray, and you just pray how you pray, right? I am going to pray uh, over these things. Now, I want you to pray in the Spirit or pray with your own words. Or if you know anybody who falls in these categories, I want you to begin lifting their name up as we pray. Amen? Are you ready? Pray. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. No, no, this is, this is where we participate. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up all the health care workers right now. We're putting their families and their health on the line to serve those, Father. I lift up those in our house who are health care workers providers and those first responders. We just declare the blood of Jesus over them. We declare the blood. Come on, I feel like we could pray a little bit stronger than this. I declare the blood of Jesus over them. The blood of Jesus. Protection. Protection, Lord Jesus, that you would keep them safe, Father. We pray for the elderly in Boca Raton and Delray and Deerfield and in South Florida, Father, that you would keep them safe from this virus. We pray over their lungs, Father, over their, over their respiratory system, Father. We pray that you would keep them safe in name of Jesus over our parents and grandparents, Father. We declare the blood of Jesus over them, Father. We pray over the single parents. Please keep praying. We pray over the single parents, Father, that you would help them take care of their children in the name of Jesus, that their kids would be well 
cared for in this season, Father. We pray for those who can't afford to take off work. We pray for those who are living paycheck to paycheck in South Florida. In the name of Jesus, Father, I don't know how. I don't know how you fix this, but you do. Come on, let's pray for them. Father, those who like say, I, I can't afford to take a week off. Father, we pray for those who don't have health care, who are uninsured and say, I can't go to the doctor even if I had that because I can't afford a doctor's bill. Lord, I don't know how to fix that either, but you do. I'm not an economist. I'm a preacher, and I'm a guy who knows who you are, and I declare that you have answers for this. And just saying, if you can't afford to go to the doctor, too bad, work hard, or hard is not good enough. Father, we declare right now health care over people in the name of Jesus, that they could get medication to stop this in the name of Jesus. And we pray over the immunocompromised, Father, those who cannot physically afford to get this sickness because they can't withstand it. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for them, that you would protect them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you. Come on, give it up for the word this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's so encouraging. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, if you, if you prayed to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior for the first time, or maybe you just rededicated your life today, we have people in the lobby who have connection cards. Fill out a connection card. We have uh, something we'd like to give you, um, and uh, we want to send you more information about your walk with Jesus and, 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 and next steps in that. Amen. Everybody in this room, it's one thing to, to listen to these, these words, right? So it's one thing to clap for them. It's another thing to go and do it. So let's, let's go be the church this week. Let's go visit our neighbors even today. And let's, let's just be a people of peace, a people of hope, because that's what people need right now. Amen. Can we give it up for Jesus this morning? Thank you guys so much for joining us. We love you. God bless you. Right now, our plan is to meet next week, so I'm going to say see you next week, but also follow us on social, social media, Instagram, Facebook, and just stay updated with what's going, going on. Amen? Let's get up for Jesus one more time. Have an amazing day. Take care, everybody. Be blessed.